Disclaimer. These stories will contain graphic depictions of horror elements, including, but not limited to, gore, graphic depictions of violence, body horror, murder, just all the horror. So please exercise caution when listening. Good evening. Welcome to Sniper's Creepy Crypt, the spookiest place in the here and there. The place between where you're coming from and where you might never leave. I am Sniper Shadow, and I am here in this our month of the horror and macabre to bring you tales of the utmost terrifying. These tales are not my own. I simply overhear them from passers-by. Sniper's Creepy Crypt is open for 31 days and 31 days only before it disappears for another year. So join us for some horror from the depths of the hell dimensions. It was a dreamy summer night, which is mostly normal for the place I live. But on this particular night, something just felt... off. I had come home from soccer practice at around 6pm, and my parents always had me in bed by 8. The night went on as usual. I ate dinner, played with my little sister, and did some weightlifting before bed. I had gotten into bed around 745 not sure exactly what time I fell asleep. But I didn't really have my usual episodes of restlessness through the night. This was the first night I slept peacefully in years. I was suddenly awoken by a strange noise coming from the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom anyway so I decided to go and check it out. I thought it might be a mouse or a bat, seeing as we live in the country and our house is old and has holes in the older walls. I went into the bathroom. I didn't see anything, so I proceeded to use the bathroom. I washed my hands and face, and when I was washing my face, I looked up at the large mirror that overhangs my sink. Since there was still water in my eyes, my vision was blurry and I couldn't really see much. But I thought I saw something behind me. But then I thought it might have just been my mind playing tricks on me. I dried my face and looked up at my mirror again. Right behind me, there was a little girl clutching my body, almost as if she was hiding from something. Her ghostly outline scared me at first, but as I kept looking, I could tell whatever was scaring her was coming from the basement. So I walked to my basement door and opened it slightly at first, because I was very scared of what might be behind it. This being said, I've lived in this house my entire life, and have never been in the basement. My dad mentioned to me that it had three separate parts, all separated by small windows that you could barely fit through. So I walked down the basement steps, got down to the bottom where the light switch was and turned it on. All seemed like it was okay. That was until I heard what sounded like crying from one of the other parts of the basement. In my mind I was thinking, fuck this shit. But in my heart, I knew I had to see what it was. So I ventured through the part of the basement and the light couldn't reach the other side where the other room was. It was pitch black. I still heard the crying, but it was so dark I couldn't see anything. Something gave me the urge to go to the far corner of the room, because the way the moonlight reflected off the floor, you could kind of see with what little light you had. I walked over to the corner, and stared directly at the middle of the room. There, in the middle of the room, was a chair. It had shackles for the feet what looked to be some kind of restraint for the arms or something like that. That's when I noticed there was someone sitting in that chair. I walked closer, 
only to reveal that it was the same little girl ghost that had been crying previously in the bathroom. She was also crying here, and had needles stuck in her arms, draining some kind of fluid into her. It was all quiet till she started screaming. It was so high-pitched that I thought it sounded like a siren, or something of that nature. She was saying words, but I couldn't make out anything until she spoke five menacing words that made my heart sink. She said, Get out. Daddy is coming. Not even thinking twice, I sprinted up the basement stairs, tripping over my own feet, and fell flat on my face once I reached the top. I got back up and ran to my parents' room. I told them what had happened. They went down there and checked everything out. I told them about the chair and the little girl that was screaming. They told me that there was no chair in the basement and that there had never been three parts of the basement. Me not believing them, I walked back down there and the room I saw with the chair was not there. There had only ever been two parts of the basement, my dad had said. I told him what I saw and how I knew there had to be some mistake. But I never did see that part of the basement again. I'm 18 now, and I decided to do some research on the house to see if there's any history that could have caused that. I came across an article of a man who had been arrested in 1868 for doing lab experiments on all of his children. After the man was arrested, the police found all 12 skeletons of his children stuffed behind the basement stairs under debris and concrete. Now that I have finally moved out of that house, I finally have the answer as to what I saw that night. I'm at peace. But those five words still hang over me to this day. Get out, Daddy. That concludes our tale for today. Return tomorrow for another horror-filled experience. Wherever you come from, and wherever you're going, thank you for spending some time here with us at Sniper's Creepy Crypt. Remember, traveler, eyes ahead, don't look back. Until next time, good night and good luck.